Hey, welcome back. Uh, go to our uh, resource group, right? In this resource group, what we have created, we have created one, the storage called AG204, right? Storage Smartic AG204, right? So in that, in that, what what we have uh, ideally done is like we have created one, uh, we have created one uh, blob called Smart Gallery, right? So now in that smart gallery, we don't have anything, right? And we put, I mean, put it empty purposefully, right? So, and then we switch back to our uh, our uh, web API and the web API, we have started creating the, you know, uh, the name called smart gallery API, right? In this smart gallery API, so what we have done, we have only created this as a, uh, you know, empty web app right how did we create we went to the marketplace and selected the web app service and then from there we have started creating that and we have created this one right so now uh, now if you see the tag you see this tag we have given right session colon the key session is the key and the colon ag204 is the uh, is the 204 right that's what and if you even go back to our uh, to our storage, uh, let's see what is the storage. This one, and here also we see the same tag. Okay, why are we given this tag? We can get some you know uh, some benefit out of that when we'll try to consolidate those you know uh, those resources and we we'll try to monitor those things, right? So that is the different story altogether. Uh, so now we have created these two. So now our main goal is. How can we, uh, you know, how can we push our code? Some API will write some API and push that, uh, deploy that API to our uh, the the API web we have created for that, right? This one. So now let's go back to our code. So this is the code. I mean, I have where uh, where did I uh, find this? Is from our, uh, you know. So we have uh, we have one, you uh, know. Uh, a github so i i uh, told you right i will uh, i'm going to share this uh particular uh a github link to you so uh, to go ahead and uh, look into those right so let me right away ping it in the what is the best way let me ping in the chat itself okay you have access to chat right um chat So I'm I, I'm referring to this. So if you go here, right? So the one I mean, uh, you see like the API code, right? Here is the API code available. So in this API code, what I did, I just open this, open my code, right? Open my code, and went to open folder, open folder, and from the open folder, what did I say? I went to this particular starter, uh, you know. Uh, uh, starter folder and I have selected API right and from this API so we're going to open it okay so this is selected so you are not going to open it anyway so now so my API code is available here now right it from where it came it came from the code we have in the github right so now what we'll do so we'll see like what exactly it's happening right so let's go to the controller hope you you guys have some knowledge and uh, 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 knowledge on the dotnet side of the house right and if the, if you have it will be easier to understand but if you don't have don't worry about that try with your own language right whatever the programming language you know Try with that, okay? The same functionality, same thing. If you know the programming language, you must know about the, you know, uh, you must know know about the uh, API channel, right? So, so we'll go with that. Let's check this image dot image dot 
image controller right so in that image controller what we have uh, we have all these things right so should i i'll go back to the whiteboard i'll just draw for you like at least you will able to understand right so let's for example we have code here right code so what we are trying to do we have we have storage here right in from this storage we are trying to get some file right read some file means we have to have a function to read blog anything you can you can access blog read blog or whatever the function name you want to provide you can provide this in general i'm not talking about the specific to the dot net but in general right if you want to read some uh, image from a particular storage or just think of like a table right if you are using mysql or if you are using you know uh, if you are using sql server okay or maybe psql postgresql okay doesn't matter so if you have some table inside that so and you want to read that table what you are uh, going to do you are going to write one function for that or method for that to uh, to write some logic inside that which will create you will create a connection to that and then you will try to read the you know read the table record by record and print it or do whatever you want to do on that right exactly same kind of thing you are while you are going to you know uh, uh, going to access the storage for accessing the storage you have to a connection string that that connection string you can you know you can hold it somewhere in the configuration file config file that's fine right and you know you have the you have the connection string database connection string or blob connection string from here you already read this connection string right now you have to access the storage account and the blog so from for that whatever the method you have written under that you have to write some functionalities right functionality in the sense like okay how to access a blob that syntax right blob syntax and then while you are able to read the blob then how you can operate on that blob right something like that then again what once you will read the blob you you can return that blob right for every method you can have a return statement right return statement something you have to return whatever the thing you are returning you have to catch accordingly right see so the only thing is like if someone uh, someone will give you uh, 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 someone will give you uh, uh, what uh, uh, let's for example you got a car right so the car can be you know you can park in the uh, park in the garage right but when he, when you are uh, when you are having a you know bike okay bike means not motorcycle though okay bike means two wheeler bike okay bicycle so bicycle then you can always uh, you know uh, always park it anywhere anywhere else right not only the garage right you can park it in a patio or maybe you can hold it in behind the behind your car or something like that right so likewise whenever you are returning any function i mean uh, return value whoever is calling to this particular function or uh, not if i'm talking function then you will probably think of like the function service right function apps no not that okay whenever i i should talk about like method okay whenever you are writing any method so in that method there has to be a return type right right so that type has to be cached by someone who is calling this particular okay i'm not going too much into that okay it will might confuse you and okay so now you have written some uh, some logic to access a blob inside this and you have written that blob uh, blob storage so now what you have to do you are going to write another you know api called get get method with slash my blog for example okay so with it starts with slash something that's called a route right route so now this route has the method called get get means get it has the functionality of only reading something from somewhere that's all you this method cannot update anything or delete anything or something like that for that we have we have some more methods uh, http methods called post 
where you can we can add some blob add some images to the blob or files to the blob okay put means you can what you can do you can update update image or replace image okay there is a method called delete right that you can delete any image from the blob storage right so for different different functional <coughs> functionality there are different methods available for the http http methods okay so this way you can able to understand like okay whatever the whatever the api you are writing what kind of api that is what is the functionality of that uh, api you are writing then you can always provide that i mean a respective method for that so that while you are going to you um, get, i mean uh, execute that url you should able to read write or you will get the get those respective access as well right read write overwrite right or remove or delete kind of right those are the different permissions you can have you have ever heard about crud these are the things i mean we mostly write the apis to deal with this kind of operations right create read update delete crud you mostly in the database world you uh, you heard about this this particular word very frequently and when this comes to picture you usually mostly you know write the write uh, write apis for those to create create a record or create a file read a file update a file or update a record in the database and delete a record or delete database from the uh, uh, delete a uh, record from the database right similarly this is also storage so you have to write some apis so now in our dot net world though the syntax are little bit different but almost exactly the uh, uh, the concept behind the rest api are same right if you see everywhere for writing a rest api you have to have a root root always start with a slash right the forward class so this is the root you have to define under this whatever the number of api you are going to write everything will follow to this right that means all your apis are in a tree structure right let's for example this is your root root uh, root level then you can write any apis you want to write here right so everything starts with root maybe slash my web app dot com slash xyz like that way so this is always goes with root everything goes under root right so whenever you will access slash get my get my image slash replace my image right delete my image kind of you know your uri or your uh, api name could be like this right okay so these are the things it has to be tree structure so that way whenever we are seeing here right so it's first starts with route okay the route has to be start with the root the when you start with slash it always starts with root right and you know like api controller and all you have to you know uh, uh, reference to that so that so that your compiler will understand the whole program is related to the api controller this controls the whole api execution right and then the it's a image controller you have given the name right the class name and this is the control base right the syntax you know i am just trying to touch uh, touch upon those things a little bit right and you have to build a http client object right the variable you have to i mean uh, create one with our an uh, option types and the http client types so that using this you have, you will you can able to access to the api itself right so that's why these are the clients you have to create those right and uh, and then then you know the syntax you are building the constructor and then uh, going into you know, writing some function right so now here i am going to 
write the method we are talking about where we are writing all these logic for accessing a blob, right? Reading a blob. So everywhere, like accessing an API server, as we are using HTTP client, exactly same, accessing a blob server or blob storage, we have to use a blob client, blob service client. Okay, because that is already available somewhere else. We are trying to access that. To access that, we have to use some code level, code base to, uh, to deal with that. Means you have to have some client library to connect to that, right? So while you are using client library, you are passing what? The connection string. Without connection string, you don't know where to connect, right? And this library will not, not able to understand like what is, I mean, where to connect. Right? That's why you are passing this. And the second is like the container client, right? The blob container client. So you are going to get that blob itself, right? See, we have two things here, two hierarchy. One is our uh, go back storage. We are talking about the storage now, right? Uh, storage accounts. Our storage accounts, this guy, right? See, we have two levels, right? One is the account, and then we have the blob, right? We have the blob. So now, the in the first line, we already connected to the account. Now we are going to access this particular blob, right? And this particular blob name, we are going to provide there, right? So now here, that's why you are providing the container name, right? So this is our container name here, right? Containers, this is the containers, right? So now, this is the this is connecting the container reading a specific container uh, so this line is responsible for the first line is respons responsible for to connect to the uh, you know your database i mean their storage and the second line is responsible for connecting to the or reading to a specific container where we are passing the container name okay where from this container name will come i'll tell you okay now as we have executed this as async you know the async concept of async async means it's a parallel execution it's a future execution you are just firing and forgetting it right you are just executing and just leaving it it's uh, on way so that it whenever it will execute and get that file it will give me back right so that's how the i mean the async is it's a parallel execution ideally so let's for example we only have the one i mean only one route here if we have hundreds of routes, right? Just think of like Facebook, right? Meta. Facebook has lots of functionalities, right? So whenever you are trying to access some, you know, uh, some post, uh, you are creating some post, someone is, uh, you know, reading that post, how all these things happens. And it's in a million, million of users, right? If you don't go with this async way, then everything will be blocked, right? It's unblocking. It's a parallel execution on block, right? This function execution, this code level function is not blocking to anyone, right? So that's why, and I'll keep talking those, you know, uh, programming concept, then I'll just keep going inside that. Then I'll just, uh, you know, uh, uh, going off track. Okay, so yeah. So those are the very, uh, you know, uh, uh, high level programming concept the parallel execution and sequential con execution right so just keep in mind async is for parallel execution right it's a fire and forget kind of thing so now what it will happen whoever will call this particular uh, method that route will able to get this particular container client connection right now we have a method now what we are going to do we are going to write one API for that. What API? We'll write an API called get, right? So whenever whenever we are put slash, okay, on that particular web app we have created, it will automatically show us the what are the blobs available in that particular storage, okay, the content. So now what it will do, this is what your syntax is. So everything in async mode, right? And this has to be a task and action result whatever the your you know the syntax is you know that the type of the type of the you know the the type of the method you are just you know uh, providing and the method name is get okay now what is the 
what is the method for this particular API you are using? Here we are assigning HTTP get method, right? That means this API, whenever we will call this particular API, it will only responsible to read something. It cannot do anything else, right? So that's where it is. Now it's trying to call this particular method we have uh, written here, right? That means it will get a container client, right? And it will try to list out all the all the blobs available under that. Okay, here, right? Now it's trying to sleep blob client. It given the blob name, right? And it will iterate through all the all the blobs available inside. Right. And end of the day, what it will do, it will write some log statement into the console, got images, and then it will return OK. Return OK means result 200. OK, 200 return type. Post means you can now create a one whenever you will call slash. OK, slash with post post method, you can able to send an image in your body. Your body means uh, the you know the post call body, right? So you have to attach a file as an image to post it, right? And then you can go from there, right? So ideally, there are two methods. If you see, whenever I'm uh, you know writing post, it has to be HTTP post. It doesn't matter like your method, you know your uh, method name has to be the same. You can post image. You can write this way also. OK, this is and this is, is different. This is the function uh, method name and this is the HTTP method type, right? So don't confuse you with the same name, right? So that's what it is. So it's up to you what name you are going to provide, right? It will um, it will not harm. So now so this is the uh, this is the API code. Now, second thing is like where will get this particular container name? How this uh, how this particular you know code will understand this container name and the storage connection string, right? So those are the things available in our app settings .json. In our app settings .json, whatever the key we have provided, it will try to access that key from our environment we have set up yesterday. Did we set up? Yes, we did, right? If we go back. Go back to our uh, web app, right? What we have created some gallery, right? Yes. So if you go, where was that? Uh, go to that settings, environments, and app settings. Did we? We didn't, right? So we have to add one. So we have to establish a connection in, in between, right? So uh, connection in the sense like if you go back here a little bit, the connection is here. We have to establish this connection, right? So now, now if we we'll go and establish that connection, so we should able to see those, uh, you know, see those uh, files available over there, right? And but we have to get through the API rather than directly from the storage account, right? So we'll we'll go one by one, okay? So now the code is here this storage account here i am giving blank i didn't provide any connection string why as i said yesterday right we are not going to i mean we shouldn't exploit our uh, any credential or any connection string in any of the any of our code if we do so then it might be possible like your credential will be comp compromised and your storage might be misused right or your uh, your application will be misused ideally. So that's why I didn't provide here. Why I didn't provide here? I'll provide this one exactly in our app service. OK, and where in the app settings itself, right? In the environment variable, I'll provide this key and actual value. So that whenever this program will run, this particular controller will run, control, controller will able to find out this particular key name. So when it will go to this particular key name, it will try to find out from the app app app, app settings .json, right? And it will see, oh, there is nothing, uh, nothing, no value given. Now it will try to go back to the environment variable available in the Azure web app, 
we have configured and it will try to read from there if that is also empty then it will not able to connect okay so we try that let's try first we'll will not provide any connection here and we are not even providing any connection here as well but we'll try to deploy it and try to access the access the blob if we are able to access it or not right so now now what what will happen so here the full image container name right what the container name is this is the images container name right and the the thumbnail image container name is something given like this right so this is how this is the default name you can always override this one as well in our environment right so now let's go back and check right we'll, what we'll try to do uh, we'll try to make sure like we are we are deploying this particular application into our uh, this is also application right so deploying this application into our web app we have created web api app right the smart tech api uh, we have created the web app so what we'll do if you see here this particular program is already built and the whole the whole application is already built and become a zip file available in our project so this zip file also available in our github right so same thing i have committed to that so now this zip file has all these functionality available we have written over here okay so now the app settings all these things available inside this okay so now what are the things we are going to do so whenever you you have installed this particular uh vs code right i'm using vs code so make sure make sure you have installed some of the azure related azure related libraries the extensions i don't know which what uh, editor you are using but my favorite editor is uh, vs code right i do uh, most of the things i do python so uh, this is code in python and uh, other uh, languages as well so uh, uh, azure so whatever the you know uh, libraries you need so most of the things you need to install those first thing first thing first thing first azure tools if you install azure tools you will able to get the azure cli inbuilt right azure cli so whenever you will you know apply ag ag is the command we are uh, we talk about in our uh, you know previous classes right ag the ag command is the cli command for azure accessing the azure uh, azure environment right we can able to azure uh, uh, you know access azure through azure portal and also we can able to access azure from our uh, uh, local right i mean local in the sense like local system using the cli so if you install this guy then you will able to get those things right now whenever you are uh, using ag hyphen hyphen elf help so you are getting all these you know commands what are the different commands you can able to use with that right these are the things you can always try it out right but we we'll, now we'll try one i mean one uh, uh one command that is called web app right web app and we'll try to deploy it this is the web app you see managing web app this command is managing web app that means what will be our next command uh, let me clear it out a little bit okay ag web app minus minus help now you can see what all what all commands you can use along with web app okay so these are the commands you can use web app browse web app create you can create directly web app from here command line and you can delete web app deploy we are going to use this guy right now okay so you can also list let's try list okay try live list we have we have web app, web app some of the web app right let's try try it so uh ag uh web app list see you got one one gesture where it all define all the web apps available in our uh, account see one of that is but where what is that what we have created here this one is created now now if i 
if I provide a specific, you know, this is for uh, overall on my subscription. Now, if you want to squeeze it down to a specific resource group, you can always provide that, right? The group, you can provide that group as, you know, uh, uh, list. You can provide the group alongside that, right? You can do do those things now. So these are this is how we can able to you know, use our web app command, right? So now we'll try to try to deploy the deploy this particular you know uh, particular zip file we have, right? So for that we have a specific command what we can uh, try to use, right? So see here you can see the command. Should I clear it out a little bit? Oh. Is it uh, is it visible or should I uh, make it a little bit a uh, little bit uh, bigger? Uh, let me do it if I can. Or I can send the size anyways. So now just try to understand this particular uh, particular uh, line, right? We are trying to execute a Azure command CLI. And we are trying to deal with what kind of resource web app resource what kind of command we are trying to execute deployment we are trying to deploy something into the web app resource right and what should be our source source is zip file right so to to look for what are the different kind of files you can you know uh, apply as a source and deploy you can always check up to source hyphen hyphen health okay copy this paste it and say hyphen hyphen health then you can able to see what are the different kind of sources you can apply for this now as we have a api zip file so we are able to we are going to provide as config zip next what is our resource group resource group is our rg smart Techie. we know that right because we have created the web uh, web app under this particular uh, under this particular resource group so hyphen hyphen resource group equal to this then what where is the source we have de defined sources uh, zip file right but what is the src the code where is the code the code is available in our api This is not web api.zip right api.zip here in the left side right so now that source we have provided now what we have to provide what is the name of name of the web app resource into which you are going to deploy it so our web app web app name was api right see how easy it is if i give the naming convention you know in a right way it's very easy in a convenient to uh, remember it right i don't have to go back to again the you know uh, our azure portal and see like what are the what are the what exactly the name i have given or something like that right so always keep those things in mind in in your real time work as well that will definitely help you in long term okay so uh, so that's the thing. so now we are going to deploy this particular g file api g file into smart Techie api web app resource right so that's where we're we going to do so let's try try with that right i'm trying to execute that what happened okay so smart Techie api resource group this was not found right so let's check what is the uh, what is the problem uh resource group smart techie all right okay so let's go back and check what happened to that oh wrong what we have given see that is what the problem i was talking about if you give the name naming convention is that way then we could get in a different way right so here what is this i didn't give I didn't give smart techie api rather i gave the different name smart gallery api okay so that's how you can you know predict like what exactly you are going to do 
So now, so you can now check, change this one. Smart, Smart Gallery API, right? Now let's try it. Now it's trying to starting the Jeep deployment. This operation can take some uh, while, right? And deploying endpoint, uh, I response with you know status code this and done. Okay, so the command is executed. This is the green signal we have. So well, this is my console, so I have given all those tooling systems, so that's why I'm able to like this. Okay, so it's it's executed. There is no fail uh, fail status, right? So it's succeed. If you see the provision state, succeed, right? Now go back, go back to this, and we'll try to refresh it, right? And we'll go over here and try to refresh it. Oops, no, 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 no. Okay, so I was about to refresh it. So now let's try to look for it, right? So we can always try browsing this, right? Okay. We'll try to browse this and okay interesting what do you understand from this this is the exception we got when we try to run that particular run this browse this particular api right web uh, uh, web api but we got this particular see this is the this is the web API, uh, web app we have, right? But why this is throwing null pointer exception? Because for this particular connection stream, you remember we didn't provide anything from our application. Let's go back to app settings. We didn't have given anything. When it's try to read this, it got null, nothing, right? And it tried to read from the environment variable as well. Is there any connection string available? No, then it's obvious, right? So, I mean, you can now understand like, okay, there is no connection string available in anywhere in the environment, right? Or the configuration, then it's obvious the null pointer exception, right? So to avoid that, what you have to do? You have to add this guy, right? You have to go here, right? Add the connection string here, this, and yesterday we uh, we copied that connection string for those right here it is right we have copied this yesterday right and okay now you are saying like why you are giving only storage connection string why not x y z there is a region why if you see this particular key, this particular key is available in our code. If I if I want to provide X, Y, Z here, I also have to provide here X, Y, Z. Right? Then only it will it will able to find the key. Otherwise, key will be mismatched, right? So those are the things you need to just remember, like how, what and why we are providing that key name, right? So if you're wondering now what we have to do, we have to apply it. Now this guy is added here. See this key is here. Now let's try to refresh it. Okay, nope, wrong. What happened? I didn't apply here. So that's why it just went away. Microsoft should change this. This apply should be available somewhere over in the top usability purpose, right? Anyways, so uh, now this is uh, this is apply. See, why should I click two applies, right? <laughs> it's just rear end button, right? Anyways, so uh, it's their UI system. So we have to apply one more, once more, right? Then we'll confirm to add, and then here it is, right? So now you can see here. If you even refresh now, it will be there, always there, right? So it's available now. Let's go back. It will take maybe a little time to just propagate to the actual uh, environment. But let's go back to this particular again. And we'll just say refresh. Beautiful. What happened? 
now you understand like how the connection string if i'm not providing the connection string i don't able to so now now here the point is like why you are seeing just a list empty list it's obvious right so if you go back and see your uh, see your storage right uh, let me let me see what is this guy can i see where i'm going uh, the storage storage in the storage we don't have anything here right uh, containers and images we don't have anything here right so now tell me one thing what we didn't have images the name blob name called images but why it's created images do you remember because in the code we have written that if this is not available it will try to create one right so that's how it will be right so it's created the created the image okay created the image through the uh, through that particular uh, uh, particular api right but there is nothing here what we can do let's try to add something here so that we can able to see something in our web web page right so this is the web page it's a dynamic web page now right web application so let's go back go back to our uh, go back to upload and try to upload something okay let me find uh, something you hmm. can find something interesting uh, is that what is that my text to present and okay whatever right something i just drag it and it's image and i just you want to override just override it not a problem upload it and here is it right so now this file is now uploaded now now this is the storage in the storage we have uploaded one we didn't touch anything to our web app remember right so now let's go back and refresh again amazing right so now what you can do try to access this guy so this is now listing the files right listing the files uh, images or files whatever the files available in that particular blob which blob images blob right now if you will try to access this well don't confuse with this right this is one screenshot from our web app, uh, website and it's become an image and that image we have uploaded okay so don't confuse it this is this is not exactly web, web page okay this is a, just an image right so now you understand how your api is working see why we are not providing slash gate or something like that because that that's how we have written the code right that's how we have written the code in the controller see if it would have been we have we could have provided right get my image image then probably you could provide after this only only providing this only you can able to get those list okay otherwise not okay so that's why to understand those small bit and pieces like how those things are working and how they are connected to each other that is one of the thing you need to i mean you know um, get into more and more i just wanted to you know give you all those hints like these are the things if you are if you are getting this kind of issues go there or if you are if you want to change this way then what should you change and what are the places you need to change right so this is what uh, it is right so now we are able to let's for example upload something else also right uh, let i'll try to upload something uh, one more one more one more come on, come on. something uh, Okay, I'll just upload it and I upload it. Now we have two files, right? So now we should able to see two files, two files 
in our uh, uh, web API, I mean web UI, right? Not UI, but uh, from here we are going to access, right? We should see two files. See, there are two files in the list. So try to see the second one, right? What is the second one says? Oh, no, second one was the, oh, the older one. So we should go for the first one. So now when you are going to do, so you are getting this list of files, right? Now you can build something on top of this as a UI, right? UI to visualize those uh, those uh, files available, the images available in your storage, right? Those are the real time use cases. What you need to learn, how you can build something out of something, right? So that's how it is, right? So I uploaded some, you know, some uh, one superhero image, right? So it's, I mean, it's uploaded there and we are able to access those. So now we are accessing through web, I mean, uh, web page, right? I mean, the browser. What if we'll, uh, uh, you know, call the same URL through our Postman, right? That's, you know, the Postman, how to use the Postman. Uh, I'll tell you, have you ever seen this? Uh, seen this particular uh, uh, tool earlier, you might have, right? Okay, so let's, for example, I'll create one. Uh, I have created connection uh, collection, so just it's uh, it's nothing, uh, nothing much, right? So what you're going to, you can create a add request, okay? Add request here. What kind of request? Uh, I mean, no, the request name you can provide. Uh, get my images right so it's not exactly the route name the route name you have to provide here but we don't have anything to do with that right so we are not providing any specific uh, uh specific we are just accessing the route you know that root we are accessing root means we should get list of files available in that uh, particular storage right now what is the method see if there are a lot of methods available but our method is get method, right? Select that get and just execute that. I didn't provide anything. So this header and all, it's coming just uh, just like that from the uh, by default from uh, uh, Postman, right? We didn't add anything. So not even in the body, anything, right? It's just raw, nothing. So we are just calling as like we are calling from browser. We are calling from our uh, API tool that's called Postman. You can execute and test your API here and we are trying to execute this okay so invalid query parameter right so there is something error in the url right so this is not the actual url this is the wrong url right see we are accessing to the storage we supposed to access to the web api okay because it's not able to access this URL not valid because this is only valid inside the Azure, not outside, right? For uh, to access the storage from outside, we have to go through the API route, right? So let's replace that actually our API, right? This is our API, right? The gallery API. Now, collect. Amazing. See, you beautifully see this, you know, uh, the JSON, uh, the array, right? In this list, you have two items. Okay, now click, click any item that itself become a, that itself become a URL, right? So if you go with this, right? So you can access, you know, test your API in two different ways, right? So even you go here and try to execute this. So that URL itself comes with its own signatures, right? and uh, the keys that's why you are able to access to the storage directly last time we are only only try to access this much right this much that's why we are it, we are not able to access that whenever you are passing the key along with that particular uh, you know, url you are able to see those right now send it see this is another image right so that's how it is so we uh, we saw like how we, we can able to uh, deploy the uh, deploy the application right the API application right okay then thank you so much.